In this video, I'll be taking the cheapest Kia Sportage on its first trip ever over a thousand miles and I'll let you know what it's like from LA to San Francisco and back. On the way, I'll stop and see some friends and I'll tell you what I like, what I dislike and is it worth spending the money? Hello YouTube, this morning we're here in beautiful Pismo Beach, California and with us we have this beautiful snow white 2024 Kia Sportage. I've always thought that this front is a little controversial, um, you don't have your standard headlights. Um, but at night, you could really see the definitions. You see the two LED, the two LED headlights right here. So when the car is off or the headlights are off, you're not sure what you're looking at. But at night, you really see it and it kind of makes sense. That's, that's my take on it. Um, the rest of the front grille, this area here, it looks okay. Sometimes it kind of looks unfinished to me. But overall, the design is fine. Um, sometimes Kia, they could do, they sometimes do a little much. But this I could live with. This car competes with the likes of the RAV4 and the Honda CRV. And um, this is a LX, which is the base model with all wheel drive option. And the all wheel drive, which is cool has a center locking differential. So let's take a look at the design. Getting past the headlights, um, you could see these really beautiful 17 inch wheels finished in some polished metal and black. There's that lower valence, which is a combination of aluminum and plastic cladding. You have plastic cladding going over the wheels down towards the back you could see the windows kind of converge to a point here and then the tail lights kind of wrap around giving you kind of like a range rover ish look and then there's also that aluminum looking finish on the d pillar okay um down here, we could see that we have disc brakes in the back as well as the front, which adds a little performance of braking. Full LED tail lights, and we have this spoiler coming around the back here, which kind of makes it look real sporty, along with the shark fin antenna. This model does not get roof racks, but I'm pretty sure you could add it. Um, come around the lower back, you can't see the muffler. The exhaust is hidden, but you still have that grill design that's in the front. You have your reflectors back here and some more metal cladding to finish off the look. Your Kia logo, um, backup camera right here. And it's a striking look. It's, it's pretty decent. It's kind of right there with the design of the other cars in its class. To open your fuel door, you give it a little push towards the back and it pops right up. When you're done, you push and latch. With all-wheel drive, ground clearance improves from 7.1 to 8.3 inches. We see we have strut type suspension in front and multi-link suspension out back. Using a button above the license plate to open the tailgate opens up 40 cubic feet of storage or cargo area. And with the seats folded, you gain an additional 34 cubic feet. This thing is massive. We have a donut, max speed 50. And there's room in here, um, not much insulation, 
but I must say inside the cabin is pretty quiet at highway speeds. We have a 60-40 split folding rear seat and reclining so maximizes the comfort for your passengers. So right here you have the seat releases. All right, moving to the back. The driver's seat is set to my position um, for a long drive because I drove up here last night. And you could see I have, I would say, four to five inches of room from my knee to the driver's seat. And that's, that's, that's really great because I'm six foot two. So usually when I'm sitting behind somebody, it's very important that I have leg room to feel comfortable and like I said before these um, rear seats recline so when you're back here you have you're very comfortable and those front seats I did not feel fatigued last night I drove four hours this is like a, this is a brand new car I hopped in there drove four hours up here and not once was I uncomfortable the only thing I might complain about the front seats was that there's not enough thigh support. Um, I wish I could bring up um, the seat so I could have more thigh support, but that's my only complaint. Okay, what else we have back here? Two vents, storage behind the seats. Folding down armrest, two cup holders. This is a nice design. Your power window switch, grab handle, a little bit of storage. Um, the way this is oriented, <laughs> it's not very useful. You can only fit smaller items in here and your speaker. Grab handle up here, reading lights. Okay, so. This is a nice texture, nice vents, and um, you can kind of see this theme around in the interior, goes over here. So it's a nice appointed interior. I like having a actual physical shift lever instead of the push buttons that you get in cars nowadays. Right here we have USB-C charger, regular usb a, there's no wireless charging in this model and a regular 12 volt socket the center stack we have adjustable cup holders this one comes with a heated seats option um, other models you could get other trim models you can get heated and ventilated seats your lock-in center differential and your drive mode select um, park assist the start stop for the engine um, parking mirrors i mean cameras parking cameras downhill assist and auto hole for your brake storage it's not great it's it's a small bin you could see by the size of my hand in the glove compartment you have your manuals and um, just serves this purpose, no extra space, just for some documents. With this base model, you get manual controls for your seats. In the higher trims, you have more adjustability and also power assist. This one, we have the Tex seat in black, only option on the LX model. Moving to the steering wheel, generally it kind of just feels like hard plastic, but if you push really hard, you could tell it's kind of soft. But I never had any fatigue while driving last night. Modes, um, voice command, is your volume, your favorites, your telephone. Over on the right side, you have your lane keep assist, um your menu your cruise control or your um, speed control for your assisted driving 
and this these here to toggle through so the steering stocks you have on the left for your life your usual indicator your flash and um, your light control auto off and lights on daytime running lights on your right stock you have your windshield wiper rear and front right below the instrument panel you have your emergency brake you pull on it to set you push to release traction control off and then this controls the your brightness of your instrument panel the Kia is very confident and comfortable at highway speeds with four adults and luggage it was always comfortable although I must report with rougher roads some tire noise will come through the cabin but that's normal with most vehicles the Kia did very well on sweeping curvy roads I always felt confident never felt like I needed to make multiple adjustments within the turn even on country roads the Kia felt very planted and it makes a great vehicle for a road trip after a visit to Hertz Castle and checked out some wildlife, visited some friends at the beach, we called it a night. Good morning. This is our third day of the trip in uh, beautiful Monterey, California. And I wanted to talk about fuel efficiency so far. I think we have racked in about 400 miles and I'm averaging about 30 mpg. This is the 2.5 liter four cylinder. It's made it to an eight speed automatic transmission, all wheel drive, 9.3 seconds to 60. And, um, I think the hybrid um, is a little better, shaves off about 2 seconds to 60. So 187 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque. Acceleration is nothing to brag about. You won't win any races from a stop. It keeps up to highway speeds pretty fine. Um, you could mildly pass people, but this is not what this car is about. It's just transportation. Just taking people and things from places. If you need something faster and you like Kia, you could probably opt for the hybrid version. That shaves about two seconds off the zero to 60 time. So for tech, you have auto emergency braking technology pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane follow assist, lane keep assist, which I used last night and even in the dark and in construction areas, I must say it's, it worked pretty well. Um, sometimes I would even just test it, just take my hands off the steering wheel completely um, and it would track perfectly well. Rare parking sensors, high beam assist, rare occupant alert. 12.2 inch instrument panel it's all full digital and it's kind of customizable over here you have an 8 inch touch display um, so basically your multimedia entertainment whatever you call it um, couple vents below I like that when cars put the hazards right front center that's where you need it in an emergency you need access to it you don't want to be searching for it all over the place all right so this is not a dual zone control um, climate control because um, the base model it's available on the higher end um, models your backup camera has guidelines and by the yellow and the red so your yellow is kind of a cautionary the red is like the danger you're very close 
I think most of us know that. What I wanted to point out was the blue, which kind of shows you where your vehicle is actually positioned right now, the line. And this uh, line, this guideline actually turns while you turn this, the steering wheel. We're finally here, San Francisco. So that marks the halfway point of our trip. Zero issues so far. So with this, we're just gonna enjoy the place. So we're finally back in LA. And after putting this car's first thousand miles ever on the odometer, we averaged about 228.4 miles per gallon. Zero issues. My only complaint is this key right here. This key. This is 2023. My Prius is a 2013 and it had keyless start like you get in and you push the button you start and you go what's going on kia so let's go over the other features this car have i know i already touched on a lot of them but let's take a look at these features well basically you will go over these features if you want to you could pause the video at the top you could see the different trims all these trims have the same engine there's also a hybrid model which is not listed here and there's a plug-in hybrid also so I'm more interested in this one because of the price point the other models go to high $30,000 range which I'm only concerned about the $27,000 this is hard-earned money. And for this being a base model, this, there are a lot of features here. You could see the car is comfortable. It rides well. Had zero issues. I know it's brand new, but still. Kia has a 100,000 mile, 10-year powertrain warranty. So let's say they honor that. You want something different than a Toyota RAV4 a Honda CRV, a Mazda CX. This this is a safe case. So, if you want something different, I definitely recommend this. There's, you're not giving up anything. The ride is great. It's stylish. They're giving you a lot for twenty seven thousand dollars. So this is my stance on this. I'd recommend this if it's not a car that you're trying to keep for ten years. Because I know maybe after five or six, seven years, the retail on that will be maybe less than the Toyota or the Honda. So this is what you're giving up to own this. But it's something different and it works well and it's great. This 2024 Kia Sportage surprised me. I did not expect the comfortable ride the driving dynamics, the fuel efficiency. So it's definitely worth it. What I did not like was that I have to stick a key. Maybe I'm spoiled, but in this age, nobody needs to pull out a key every time and put it and start it. So that's my only gripe. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.